So for this project, I started with a 7 by 9 inch frame that I had picked up at a garage sale. I took the backing out, took the glass out, cleaned up the glass, and then took clear Elmer's glue and put it around the perimeter of the back of the frame where the glass sits. Now the clear Elmer's glue is runnier or thinner than the regular Elmer's glue so if you're just starting to do this I'd almost suggest just use the regular Elmer's glue. Um, the only difference between the two is if a little bit gets on your glass and you pour resin over it you can't see it with the clear Elmer's glue but the um, the milky white Elmer's glue you really have to uh, clean off really well before you pour resin on it. So after I replaced the glass I went around the perimeter one more time with the clear Elmer's glue and this serves two purposes. It holds the glass in place and it helps to prevent any resin leaks. This has to dry overnight at least 24 hours sometimes longer if um, you put more on. So here I am just cutting a piece for the tree trunk and what I'm using is a piece of stained glass and I'm using my cutting tool and I'm scoring a line all the way up the top and then I'm taking my running pliers and I'm breaking the glass. It's real easy to cut stained glass especially simple shapes. I did learn on YouTube and I'm taking my cutting tool one more time and going across it and scoring a line and then taking the running pliers again and breaking it. And um, if you want to learn how to do it, YouTube is a great source and it's free. So there's a piece for the tree trunk. Next, after the Elmer's glue has dried overnight, I take painter's tape and I put it around the back of the perimeter of the frame just as an extra precaution against resin leaks. And this is something that I oftentimes forget to do, so I'm really happy when I remember. And a lot of times when I remember to do it, I'm already pouring the resin on, so it's just too late. So um, this is really a good idea. And not only do you have to use this as a precaution, you still have to have some kind of protective paper underneath your project, just in case it leaks. Then I flip it over and I take my pre-mixed resin. The resin I'm using for this project is art resin. It's a one-to-one -one ratio resin that has to be mixed for about three minutes very slowly. I like this resin because it doesn't have any VOCs. I do wear a respirator when I use it because it does bother my sinuses. So when you're working with resin, you should use gloves. I When I mixed it, I had the gloves on, but then I took them off and I'm just using a little bit to put down first because I am going to be using beads. Normally when I'm working with glass, I put the glass on top of the glass and then drizzle the resin over on top. The reason I'm doing this it this way is because I'm working with beads and the beads will roll all over the place. And if you have a sticky surface to put them on, they will not roll. So now I'm just pushing it along the sides and into the corners and even though they say resin is self-leveling you really do have to move it around yourself or else you'll find some empty spots especially up into the corners. So next I'm taking my beads. These beads I picked up at Hobby Lobby. They're Christmas beads found in the Christmas craft section not in the regular bead section and I'm just dumping them on and shaping them into a Christmas tree shape. Next for the topper I'm using a little plastic uh, piece of looks like peppermint candy that you would see around Christmas time and then I have a piece of stained glass that I had cut at the beginning of the video and put that down at the bottom for the tree trunk. Next I'm using wet wipes or baby wipes to wipe around the perimeter of the frame and um, this usually will do the job but a lot of times I always keep a rubbing alcohol on hand because um, if the wet wipes don't work the rubbing alcohol on some paper towel will. And because this is um, a couple of layers I am drizzling a little bit of resin over the top of those beads too. And it's really important that you get down eye level with your project and look to see if there's any debris, hairs, um, bubbles. Sometimes it's really difficult to see and you have to look at it from multiple angles when you're working with resin. 
toothpick works really well for moving things around on the resin. And then I use the little kitchen torch to get rid of the bubbles. And this has to sit on a flat level surface overnight. You can usually touch it after 12 hours, but it takes a full 72 hours to cure. All resins are different. You need to read the instructions. It's in your best interest if you cover it with a dust cover. Hi everyone. So this is what I did with the rest of those beads. So those little containers of beads that you get from uh, Hobby Lobby, I was able to make two Christmas trees out of, and I think I may have a few left, I'm not sure. But these are the ones that I had actually got the last package of from my Hobby Lobby, and the other Hobby Lobby ran out of them. So, but I have been corresponding with some other people and they have found them at their Hobby Lobby. So if you're interested in these Christmas beads, I think they're so pretty, um, run up there right now. <laughs> And, you know, all the Christmas stuff up there is half off. I don't know if that lasts until Christmas or what the story is, but um, all their Christmas stuff half off. So I think this container was $10, so it was only 5 bucks, and I made two trees out of it. So that's pretty good, I think. But um, anyway, <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you want to be notified of future videos, go ahead and subscribe. And I hope you all have a great day. Thanks for watching.